history. It's a little bit different today, guys. Rather than doing a history video, I want to talk to you about some of my current thoughts about education policy in the United States because Hip Hughes is vehemently opposed to the current direction of education in the United States of America, and I'd like to tell you why. And then you could vehemently disagree with me down in the comments below. I wrote a letter the other day. I'd like to start off reading that letter. Dear Data, we've been friends for a long time, which makes this a hard letter to write. In the past, you've been close to me, and you've given me really good advice about teaching, and for that I will always appreciate you. But in the last few years, things have changed. You've changed. It seems like you're trying to control me in the classroom, direct every decision that I make, and worst of all, it seems like all you ever want to do is evaluate me. Ha ha, Mr. Hughes, data's not a real person, but the Ed Reform Movement and its emphasis on data. The reason really that I'm making this video is I had Chinese food today. I did, I had Chinese food. And I got this, uh, this, this fortune, and the fortune says, statistics are no substitute for judgment. Statistics are no substitute for judgment. And at the core of my profession is the art of teaching. So I want to tell you the three ways that the current Ed Reform system, I think, is hurting uh, all of us. Number one, it's screwing your kids. Um, I really do see, I, I, I was hoping that I was just becoming cranky old men and that it wasn't me. But I think that if I, if I pull myself back and I look at the situation and I'm honest with myself, I do see a difference in the kids and how they think from 15 years ago to today. I see less innovation. I see less divergent thinking. I see more blank stares. Kids want to be told what to do. When I, I do video projects, and in the past when I would do a video project, kids would brainstorm and, you know, I'd push them and nudge them, but it was like a fluidity of the classroom. It was really kind of cool. It was like organized chaos. But recently, you know, in the last couple of years when I've been doing them, the first thing kids want to do is they go, what do I do? What do you want me to do? Make a movie. Okay, what's step one? What do you want me to do? And I'm having a hard time kind of forcing them out of that kind of pattern that they're learning in their other classes, which are all very linear, very objective written, lots of rigor, lots of like structure, lots of grammar and analyzing sentences. And not that there's anything wrong with that. Elements of the common core are probably good, but the way that it's being implemented is uh, really doing a disservice to your kids. Um, schools weren't built to make kids college and career ready. That occurs during schooling, but it's the other way around. It's the other way around. It's that schools create life, that we go to school to find ourselves, that's what we're supposed to be there for, to fulfill our life's mission, to learn how to think critically and make decisions based on your identity and, uh, and, and academic knowledge. It's supposed to be kind of a place of experimentation, I believe, and it's becoming really a scientific um, procedure. And I don't think that's good for your kids. Even if they get into a top-notch university, at the end of the day, we want kids to be happy, and part of that is fulfilling the expectations that's supposed to occur. Learning is supposed to be natural. It's not supposed to come in a Pearson catalog. Number two, it's screwing the profession of teaching. Um, again, I thought maybe I'm just getting tired of the job. Maybe it's just me, but everybody I talk to, not everybody, but the majority of teachers I talk to, they, they're opposed to this. They're burnt out. Our days are spent analyzing charts and datas and numbers and trying to justify why we make decisions. Look, I'm not against like evaluations and I guess accountability. I think I'm pretty good at my job, but if I'm going to build a bridge, don't make me spend my whole career, you know, evaluating the bridge that I built. You go look at the stupid bridge. I got other stuff to do. But now we're writing SLOs and we have to have data on every kid and show growth. And it's our job to, to provide evidence and artifacts. And ah, I had stuff to do. I got papers to grade. I got lessons and kids and minds to grow. So what are you doing, man? It's really destroying the profession. Um, I teach at the graduate level and I see teachers coming in and they're telling me that they're now being prepared for what seems like a rote profession, that um, there's gonna be scripts and like uh, steps to follow and it's a profession. Remember uh, Dead Poets Society? Remember that scene? In my class, you will learn to think for yourselves again. You will learn to savor words and language. No matter what anybody tells you, Words and ideas can change the world. That's why I became a teacher. I don't want to be the guy that doesn't rip the book apart. I don't want to be the guy that measures poems. I want to be the guy that inspires poems. 
So I'm really worried about the profession. If we're going to do this right, we need to recruit great people to be teachers. We need to pay them deservingly. And then we need to allow them to do their job like we do every other profession. Accountability, that's not my job. My job is teaching. And right now, the accountability is getting in the way of the teaching. So get off my back, man. It's destroying the United States of America. Schools are supposed to unite us as a country. They're supposed to kind of create a fabric of uh, commonality between us, not to differentiate us, not to divide us. And I certainly can leave room for innovation and self-control over schools. I believe in all of that stuff. But right now, I think that we're in danger. We're in danger because our republic and the democracy of this nation and our school system is being handed over to the guy with the biggest checkbook. There, I said it. Don't be fools, folks. There's money that's being made here. There are organizations that are making money, and that's about as political that I'll get. So what do we do about it? We got some advice. All right, so what do we do about it? Well, number one, we have to fire Arne Duncan. We have to get rid of the Secretary of Education. We have to contact our congressmen and politicians who have no business that are directing these decisions and get the money out of the system. Get the politicians out of the system. Let's turn the teaching profession back to the teachers whose power it should be to direct so. And then if we're going to have accountability, let's do it in a more natural, authentic way. Having this number game nonsense, it's like a huge pyramid scheme, man. It's built to fail. So let's just rip it down and let's figure another way out to do it. Look at the system in Finland. In Finland, they pay their teachers really well, they let them do their jobs, and the results are pretty fantastic. And I think that we can be pretty fantastic as well in this country. What else can you do? Well, if you're a teacher, I think you should be a badass teacher because you probably are one for watching this video. So go down to the link below and check out the website and you can check us out on Facebook. We're 40,000 plus strong right now and we could use a few more members to raise our teacher voice and shake this apple tree, baby, because that's the only way that things change. Somebody told me today during one of my data cult meetings when I peered over to an administrator and I said, this is nonsensical, I want to scream. And they said, yeah, but it's not going anywhere. That's great. No, it is going somewhere because we're getting rid of it. And the last thing you can do is you can subscribe to my Hip Hughes History page on YouTube. Why wouldn't you do that after you watch this video? That's nonsensical. So you should click my face right now and please subscribe. Did you know that 70% of teachers have second jobs? 100% of politicians don't even do the job they were hired to do. How about that? That's a shout out to Nick Ferroni. I stole your tweet, brother. All right, guys, we'll see you next time when you press one of my buttons on the YouTubes where tension goes, energy flows.